Okay, hi, we're gonna talk about should you eat dairy? Okay, the first thing is whole milk. Whole milk's got everything in the milk, has a lot of saturated fat, tons of saturated fat. Um, milk is basically liquid meat. Um, in addition, it's got a lot of estrogen. Nowadays, they've engineered the cow so they make milk while they're pregnant. That way they can make more money off the cow. But the problem is a pregnant cow has high estrogen levels and that gets into the milk and you know a pregnant animal has high estrogen so one of the things that estrogen does is it tells the body like the woman when she's got real high estrogen levels like she's pregnant she needs to store more energy store more weight for the baby it can sort of activate something called the p power gamma switch the fat switch and some people refer to it as that and increase the tendency towards obesity um, what else about milk oh some people say well I drink 1% or 2% milk like that's a smart thing to say. No, it's a stupid thing to say because it's based on the weight of the milk, not on the percent calories. So there's tons of fat in 1% milk. There's tons of fat in 2% milk. It makes you fat. Okay, next thing. I used to drink, I actually drank skim milk. I only quit skim milk, gosh, about maybe two years ago. And I sort of felt, well, with skim milk, I'm avoiding the problems of milk. I'm avoiding probably the estrogen because it's a lipid, probably the pesticides or herbicides that get into the milk are probably mostly in the fat. I'm avoiding the saturated fat, so I thought everything was probably okay with skim milk. But the problem with skim milk even is it is all this animal protein. The more you learn about animal protein, the more you don't want to be eating animal protein, especially after you're 40 years of age. The reason is animal protein is more leucine, which appears to activate be the primary rate limiting step for the activation of mTOR nutrient signaling pathway, um, sensing pathway that when mTOR is activated, it's like a building contractor sensing that all the building materials are present. Now's a good time for the cell to proliferate and grow. Old guy, we're scared of getting cancer. A woman after 40, she's scared of getting breast cancer. You don't want something increasing the rate at which your cells proliferate, which potentially is also predisposing you to reach the Hayflick limit more quickly, meaning to accelerate aging. You don't want that. Okay, has increased methionine. Methionine is an essential amino acid and it can be a rate limiting step for cancer growth. You don't want that. Increased cysteine just has, like methionine, sulfur on it, leads to causing a metabolic acidosis. We spoke to that, about that in a previous lecture. Um, and that's not good. Predisposes you to kidney stones and uh, kidney dysfunction. All right, what else to talk about? The animal protein in the skim milk, it increases your insulin-like growth factor. I mean, what's the point of milk? Milk is to help an animal grow fast, you know, baby to grow fast. The increase in insulin-like growth factor is potentially a tumor promoter, increasing the risk of cancer growing at a faster rate. That's one other reason to avoid it. The animal protein actually also causes a cholesterol elevation. In addition, there's tons of calcium in milk. You don't want to be ingesting excess calcium, okay? I don't care if you got osteoporosis. It's not caused by a calcium deficiency typically, all right? The excess calcium will have an effect on your vitamin D to make it less likely to be uh, hydroxylated to the active form. So vitamin D typically what you measure in the blood is called 25 vitamin D, but it's actually the 125 double hydroxylated version of vitamin D that's the most active form and that one has a lot of side benefits. Uh, double hydroxy 125 hydroxylated vitamin D helps to prevent autoimmune diseases. It helps to reduce your risk of cancer. It's a good thing. And so what I'm saying is when you drink this excess calcium and you absorb more calcium, you'll tend to be less likely to activate your vitamin D and get those benefits. Um, you'll have higher risk of autoimmune disease. All right, next thing about estrogen from animal foods in general. Your liver helps you to excrete any excessive amounts of estrogen. So it does what is called conjugate the extra estrogen and then excrete it into the bile. For example, you can glucuronidate it. Now, when that estrogen passes through your bile, normally you poop it out, and that's good. But there's sort of two main types of bacteria in the gut, typically meat-based bacteria, plant diet-based bacteria. The meat-based dietary bacteria tend to have more of an enzyme called glucuronidase, where they can deconjugate the estrogen, and then your intestinal tract will reabsorb it. So you'll tend to reabsorb that estrogen, and that's one of the main reasons why meat eaters have higher estrogen levels than do plant eaters, all right? And then the problem with that extra estrogen, estrogen stimulates proliferation of the breast cells, stimulates proliferation of the prostate and the uterus. The female uterus and the male prostate are kind of analogous in terms of their hormone sensitivity. So that extra estrogen increases the risk of breast cancer, increases the risk of prostate cancer, increases the risk in a woman of endometrial cancer. So you don't want it when you get older. In addition, it causes the growth of these benign tumors called fibroids. 
Fibroids can cause women a lot of discomfort, can cause abnormal bleeding, dysfunctional bleeding. Fibroids also can lead a woman to want to get a hysterectomy. And, you know, getting a hysterectomy, if you're 50 years of age, doesn't change things that much. But for a younger woman below 35, it increases her risk, her risk of vascular cognitive impairment and dementia. Um, increased intake of uh, meat in general, milk in particular, increases the risk of premenstrual syndrome, of cramping, of endometriosis, also of anovulation. I think it appears that the galactose can be kind of toxic to the ovaries. can also be potentially a little bit harmful to the, the testicles. Um, and potentially the eyes predisposing to cataracts. These are just potential associations based on some limited research that's been done so far. Um, and ovulation, and what am I getting at with the galactose? Milk sugar is called lactose, and lactase is the enzyme that splits it. There's two parts. There's galactose and there's glucose. Glucose, of course, is the energy of life. That's, we're made to digest that stuff. But the galactose is a problem because just because you got a lactase enzyme to handle the lactose in your gut, it doesn't mean you necessarily are going to have and maintain through your life good enzymes for metabolizing galactose. And the galactose is potentially associated with less ability of a woman to ovulate and thus increasing her risk of being infertile. It's also associated with, it is thought, increased risk of developing ovarian cancer. So those are other reasons to avoid it. The real reason why I quit drinking milk was because two things. I used to just stick with the stem milk because I liked eating the cereal, but it was so hard to find a good breakfast cereal because they almost always have sodium added to them. I don't like that. It makes you hypertensive and causes other problems. And they also quite often will have MSG added to them, and I don't like that either. So there wasn't any big cereal to kind of keep me wanting to have some type of milk or milk substitute for it. I just quit them all together, and I don't like this skim milk association with increased prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is no fun to have. They don't want to do a biopsy of your prostate. They stick a big ultrasound probe up, you know, your rectum, and then they do like a sex tamp biopsy, maybe take two samples each spot, make it into six quadrants, you know, upper and lower quadrant, middle quadrant, two big core biopsies each one. I don't want the big needle up there. And then, you know, the treatment of it, if you have to have it, you have to have it. But if you can prevent it, that's even better. Okay, uh, what else? Next, we'll talk, we talked about increased risk of breast cancer from the high estrogen levels. That's just meat in general, though. Whole milk as well, though, in particular. Um, we talked about lactose, galactose. We talked about the increased risk of cataract. Also, potentially increased risk of autoimmune disease. That's not unique to milk. Any type of meat is associated with increased risk of leaky gut and autoimmune disease. Some people think that there's an association between milk and the risk of type 1 diabetes. Um, T. Colin Campbell has written quite a bit on that. There's other doctors who've written on that. Um, early onset of puberty, that has been a common problem. I've seen a lot of people, known people personally, their daughters are going into puberty at young ages, you know, 9, 10 years old. Used to be like in some of these rural plant-based communities, people are going into puberty at 17 years of age for a girl. Nowadays we're seeing, you know, girls in this country, young girls, 9, 10, 11, going into puberty. That's too early, you know. 17-year-old girl doesn't even know how to handle all her stuff. You know, 9 or 10-year-old, you forget about it. All right, so anyways, that's why I no longer eat dairy, but my quitting dairy, that was the last thing I hung on to was skim milk. And yeah, when I was a kid, I drank it and I liked it and I felt good about it. But as I get older, the older you get, the more fragile you get, the more careful you have to be. And for all these reasons, I think the healthiest diet is one that does not include dairy products.